Let's take another uh, a look at another example, but this time uh, looking at it from a pipeline, pipeline perspective. So pipeline operators deal with vast amounts of information, usually distributed across an organization. And really being able to effectively manage that and get a comprehensive view, there's certain ways that you need to really create and maintain that data. One way to do that is through ArcGIS pipeline referencing. And today, to discuss their implementation of APR from Crestwood Midstream Partners, Craig Hawkins. Craig? Thanks, Dale. And thanks for having me. So Crestwood Midstream Partners is a publicly traded master limited partnership. Uh, we operate pipelines across most of the major shale plays across the US. Uh, we are an end-to-end -end, uh, midstream pipeline operator, offering anything from uh, gathering and processing to storage and transportation to uh, marketing, supply, and logistics. Uh, we've also had tremendous growth over the last several years, and we expect this to continue, which makes for a very exciting and, and dynamic uh, work environment. So when I joined Crestwood, uh, we had three disparate databases. We had a pods relational database, we had an Esri APDM database, which was from a previous acquisition. And we also had a legacy SDE layer, which was essentially a catch-all geospatial data set. None of these databases were connected. And uh, we only had software running off of one of these uh, databases. So it was clear to me we needed to initially focus on um, migrating the databases to one single source of truth uh, database. And then second, implement software uh, that we could manage that data with. So uh, after evaluating many options, uh, we decided to implement pods next-gen light enhanced spatial with Esri's ArcGIS pipeline referencing software. So I know that's a mouthful, but essentially what it is, it's a pods, pods database implemented in a geo database, so we spatialize it and we use APR to edit it. And eventually that's going to be called pod seven with APR. So we'll be simplified. So there were several reasons why we decided to implement this. Uh, for one, we thought we were the right size company. We were a smaller operator. We didn't have a tremendous amount of edits every day. We didn't reroute pipelines a lot. And we only had one person editing our data. So uh, another reason was uh, we had clear visibility into the pods next gen working group. I'm actually on that working group, so I had clear visibility into what was going on, and we had confidence in that. We also had a really good relationship with the uh, APR, the Esri APR product development team. We had open communication. If we had any issues, uh, they, we had clear communication with them, so that made us comfortable as well. So uh, we ended up rolling out pods in November of 2017, and in addition, we rolled out uh, well, we tested APR in an Amazon Web Services cloud sandbox environment. And uh, we tested on our workflows with our data, so we were comfortable before we rolled it out. So why don't I switch over to a quick demo? And this first shot, obviously, is a high-level shot of our assets. Um, Let's zoom into our Trace Palacio system, which is in southwest, is southwest of Houston, down 59 a little ways. And you'll begin to see some more detail on our pipelines. You can see this was actually from our um, acquisition in the Esri APDM database, uh, but just has some basic attribute information. Um, and I guess I should mention, uh, APR is uh, implemented in ArcGIS Pro, so building on what Matt said just a moment ago, ArcGIS Pro is a really good uh, environment. Uh, for those of you who've used it, you know that the performance is much improved over ArcMap. So as soon as you figure out where all of your tools are, uh, the performance and, and the interface, I feel like it's a much better uh, user experience. It also has the Windows uh, ribbon effect on the top that we're used to in other applications. So as you can see here, I have the location referencing tab selected. And if I want to edit center lines, I simply click on one of these buttons, and I can do a number of different operations. In addition, I can edit attribute tables. So I can edit the pipeline table, for example, with domains, drop downs directly in APR. Always working off of a version geo database, and then we post and reconcile back to default um, after QAQC. 
Uh, and then if we need to uh, make edits, we have event editor set up as a web app in our portal environment, which we have as well. So that's very intuitive as well. We have domain drop downs, um, very simple to use. So moving on, let's switch over to imagery. OK. Um, again, same Trace Palacio system with a little more context with some facilities. Zooming in, uh, you can begin to see some of the hierarchy that we store in pods and we manage with APR. So you'll see coordinates, you'll see engineering station. Uh, you may notice the pipe segment information. So what's your outside diameter? What's your wall thickness, grade, et cetera? Zooming around uh, closer to a facility. And now let's zoom into this valve site. You begin to see some of the feature, features we manage within pods as well. So some elbows, some valves, et cetera. And zooming in here, uh, this is essentially uh, showing wall thickness change going across the road. So you're basically going from a 38 wall to a 46 wall back to a 38 wall. And you'll notice the engineering station. And, and none of this would show up in the right place if it wasn't for the APR tools managing the referential integrity uh, on the back end. That's what it's all about. That's what the software does for you. All right. So um, the key point here, though, is once you have all your data stored in one central database, uh, you can then begin to publish it out to your entire uh, organization, uh, the many stakeholders across your organization, so they can make decisions. Um, that's really what it's all about. That's what we're all after. Uh, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have Portal implemented. And these are just a few examples of how we publish it out at Crestwood. So we have a simple asset viewer. Uh, with our pipelines and facilities that we utilize. Uh, we also, here's an example of some of our ILI data that we've posted, and you can notice some clustering based on uh, metal loss anomalies and percent depth. Uh, that's very useful to our asset integrity department. And furthermore, our regulatory pipeline compliance um, likes our story maps. So we set up a story map for an audit, a FIMSA audit, and we basically have different tabs that we can click through and zoom into different areas of the particular system to uh, answer questions and make sure we're in compliance. So in closing, I uh, just wanted to say we've had a positive experience so far with Pods Next Gen and with APR. And we feel like they're both viable options for, the, for pipeline operators to consider. Thank, Thank you, you, Craig. <laughs> I, have say, I have to say, I think I just got an education in pipeline. So thanks for that. Now, seriously, you know, there how you ended it looking at that information. Now that it's managed as part of the system of record, it just becomes available to other users in the organization through the web apps you show, the story maps, and of course we know as well, then it's available to the Esri mobile applications as well. So thank you for sharing your story. Mm -hmm.